fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rel. And this week I want to feature one of my builds. It isn't really a muscle car, but it kind of is. It just depends on if uh, you believe in, in that or how things going in cycles, which I do, which I think is kind of interesting. And to me, it's fascinating how one generation perceives something and, and the next generation does the same thing, but differently. And it, it happens in cycles. So so to me, this is uh, one of those builds. I enjoy some of this stuff and then taking something like this and and hot rotting it like the traditional things because, you know, when some of these things were new, a few people could buy them. But when they became old used cars, you know, like such as life in, in the mid-50s when, you know, you couldn't afford a, a brand new 55 Chevy, but as a teenager, you can buy a 32 Ford. You know, they were only, you know, 22 23 years old and plentiful at the time and you can get you know a, a little bit more modern motor and hot rod it up and and have a good time with it and it's automotive expression but it's it's really not much different than we look at a pro touring car that we call them today you know 60s 70s muscle car but it has a modern motor an ls motor modern suspension runs and drives like a much more modern car but full-on custom but you know they can some of them look pretty stock and some of them don't you know the same applies here take a 30s car and put you know mid 50s technology in it now the push rod v8s were just barely coming out but flatheads were plentiful and hot rod parts for flatheads were quite plentiful so it's a a, a different era but same concept same workmanship and uh, you had some nice show ones that's kind of how i went here and then you've had uh, some full-on race cars chop tops and and it keeps happening that fascinates me and and i enjoy it too because everybody's got their own twists their own ways of doing things and it's broken down into many different segments you look at uh the donks today you know they, they get a lot of crap from a lot of people that don't understand them to me it's automotive expression and they're enjoying their car they're building it the way they want to build it and they're proud of what they've done and what they've accomplished and i think that's great um, no matter what you have or what you build when it comes to somebody building something with their own hands learning skills and showing pride in what they have whether it's a primered out rat rod a mini truck with a dancing bed van full of you know carpet interior and, and shag and the plexiglass windows it's all automotive expression and and i, th I think it's awesome uh low riders with the chromed out suspension and you, you really can't drive those cars past 60 miles an hour, but that's not the point. They're enjoying their car. They're showing it. A lot of them are, are hand-built. To me, that's just, it's automotive art. They're just awesome. And anything to me is better than a car rotting in somebody's backyard. It's their car. They could do whatever they want with it. But the fact that they've done something with it, whether you know, you know it's a mini truck or anything like that. But each generation has their, you know, shining cars and, and the 32 Ford, you know, it's actually one that's actually multi-generational. If you look at it, you get into cars today and, and the, you know, even these street rods, you don't see stock ones hardly much anymore. They are out there, but the mainstream is you see rotted out ones like this. Um, this one's much more traditional or you see them crazy modified. They may not even have an original part to them. They could be reproduction body, reproduction frame. But it still represents an era and an idea. You know, even you know, your 69 Camaros, it's kind of weird to look at a car like that where they make reproduction bodies, convertible and coupe shells, been doing it for 15 years now, reproduction Mustang shells, reproduction Chevelle shells, there's even Chevelles out there. So it's quite fascinating that there's enough reproduction parts out there. And on the flip side, there's the opposite happening. You get into your Thunderbirds like my dad's, um, where the, the collectors aren't really there. You get into 50s and 60s Cadillacs. You start seeing a lot of rat-rotted ones of those because they're cheap. You can buy them. The people that are buying them can't afford to restore them because you're talking $10,000 in chrome plating if you really want to restore it and give it a nice paint job. But they're rat-rotting them out because those cars, they don't have the value. And it's you know if you look at the value side of it, it's hard to justify putting that much money into a car that you can't sell. But all of these cars, regardless of what they are, they're all going up. I mean, I joke around about 
uh, my wife's Chevelle. It was a running driving car for 2250 bucks in the mid 90s when we bought it. You can't touch a Chevelle running for under 10 grand. Most projects are 10 grand for a two door. Four doors, little exception, but I've actually met people that didn't even know they made Chevelle four doors and Nova four doors. But that's what you see in the magazines and what you see at the car shows. You think they made, you know, millions of SS's and you've never seen a plain Malibu because they're all cloned. Um, mine's kind of included in that, even though I didn't put the SS emblems on the car. It's all automotive expression. And while I really like building factory stock muscle cars and I love the history, but when it comes to driving them, I, I do like the modern conveniences, the modern suspension, the, the modern AC systems. I can understand why people put LS motors in them, you know, make more power, much more reliable. You're not messing with points. Carburetors are, are great, but, you know, those are getting to the point where people don't understand them or finding people that do understand them. They're all retiring. You take a car with a carburetor to a shop and, you know, most of the kids are younger than the carburetor that are in the shop. You know, they're, a lot of the technicians are 30 and, and under and they don't understand it's a fuel toilet. You got to be a plumber, um, much like the fuel injection systems, which are more like just a sprinkler mister system. You know, to, to break it down into simpler terms, you know, all great advancements in technology where you go into uh, magazines in the 80s, the hot rod magazines and stuff like that, you know, early, mid 80s, and you see um, articles on how to take the fuel injection off and put a carburetor back on. Well, you don't see that today. You see the opposite happening now. Take that carburetor off, put this injection system on there. But it's advancements in technology is all it is. And just how different generations apply the same ideas differently and call it different things. But uh, that's, that's plenty of that. But this to me, one of the quintessential hot rods, I did it in a 50 style. That was my motivation to take a guy whose skills are up there building hot rods, but enjoying what he's got and going with a, a full on 50s theme. May not have been able to afford, but this is pretty much all out of the kit. This is the Revell kit. And uh, I enjoyed it. And for me, it's a slump buster. Kind of, you know, when you get in a slump and I want to do something a little different. And I enjoy these kits. I've built a, a few of them. And I've got a number of them, actually. But not my main focus. And like I said, I really love muscle cars and, and their history. But, I, you know, I, I just like automotive history in general. And this stuff, you know, as much fun as it is, building some of this stuff, I just, I just enjoy it. Just full-on passion. So I figured I would show this one off. Even though it's mostly built right out of the box, and uh, I'm sure many of you have built any of these Ravel um, 32 Fords. I think I got all the versions of them, including Stacy David's Rat Rod, and some of those are just a uh, crazy value now, um, even though most of them I bought new. But this one, there was a local guy, Chuck, he built a lot of these, and he was really into 32 Fords, and unfortunately he passed away, but his his Fords were just uh, uh, amazing, and I really admired them. And I was thinking of him when I was building this kit, and uh, he did get to see this. I, I did build this before he passed away. And uh, for the local guys who know me, I'm talking about Chuck Granger. I'm sure you know that, but uh, uh, many of you guys that that don't or aren't local, um, you may know him. He's been to shows, um, but unfortunately, he's uh, no longer with us. But I've always remembered, you know, him and his builds and his passion for hot rods, which was his thing. So I, 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 when I was building this, I was just picturing some of the things that I had seen and stuff that he likes. And I built this one pretty much out of the box with the wire wheels and all the chrome parts. I didn't really change anything. The tires are um, from my parts box, actually, because these are not the tires I came with. And the funny part is, I'm pretty sure they're from the little coffin. Um, monogram kit because I had one of those in the in the 80s late 80s I built one of those it wasn't my best work um, and of course I played with a lot of them so it got busted up the suspension got busted up but I'm pretty sure that's where these wheels not the wheels but the tires and white walls came from but everything else pretty much right out of that box I really didn't do anything just a nice simple build shows really well I'm pretty sure I got a trophy or two with it uh, bringing it to a show and uh, this one's just sprayed with a Tamiya Mica spray paint. It's Tamiya Red Mica, one of, one of my favorite spray paints. And I 
I don't do a whole lot of spray painting, but uh, that one just comes out beautiful. And so I've done like three or four of them in this color. And I did a simple white interior. Nothing too flashy there. I think, uh, yeah, you can see it in there. And, you know, the Ravel steering wheel and dash. and You can't really see much of it in there. Get a flashlight or something to get it in there. But uh, just a, a fun build for me and a, a slump buster and just something a, a little different and to feature for you guys and, and get into more of the history of hot rodding and modifications and and that stuff and just just automotive passion and I firmly believe if you're you're building anything be proud of it enjoy it whether or not it's a primered out pile of crap and you're driving it around um, one of my really good friends we we met each other quick story my primered out station wagon that was lowered it was working at Target and I had this uh, new guy that uh, we were training how hard is it to train somebody to push carts but just showing them the job around and we're walking around the parking lot and my primered out station wagon is sitting across from his primered out Datsun with a target top cut into it and I mean we're talking a 78 Datsun that he had that was literally no suspension on the ground target top cut into it primered out completely different from mine and he liked to just just talk smack and so he's talking smack and we're walking up, my wagon's coming up, and I'm sitting there thinking, this ought to be interesting. He sees my wagon, and he just starts going off, and he's like, look at this big pile of da-da-da. I mean, it's a big boat compared to his car. Two, two customs, completely opposite of each other, and he's just talking total smack, and it's funny. So, And then I walk, I hop up onto the fender, and I walk across the hood and hop off the other side, and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? This is my car. And all the look on his face, it was it was priceless. And uh, we've been friends ever since, and we still are friends, even though he doesn't have that car anymore. He's got a 64 Bug, and um, I've got still got my station wagon. Uh, we have we have a good time, and we talk about that moment um, a lot. But uh, his kids play with my kids, but that's a fun story for me. But um, sorry to babble on a little bit about about that, but it's funny how friendships are made. Well, enough with that, but uh, thank you for... Uh, tuning in and subscribing and and all that and I will see you next Saturday and we'll see what uh, what I come up with you for you in my builds uh, for next Saturday bye now